Hey everyone, welcome back. This has been a really crazy, crazy situation for me. As you can see, I am here already being swarmed and attacked by very um, aggressively defensive bees. And this has gotten worse as the colony has gotten bigger. This started out as a package mid-April. It is now mid-July, so three months later. And this colony has grown so big, so rapidly. It's produced honey and it's been great in every respect except for their defensive behavior. So I have not even touched the hive or gone near the front of it and they are already coming out en masse against me. I've got two layers of these goatskin gloves on. I have the bee suit. I have an entire fleece jacket, jeans, gaiters, and boots and they still want to sting right through all of this. As you can see, this is absolutely crazy. You know, I have neighbors around me. This is a backyard, suburban area. I cannot wait nine weeks, eight weeks for the new queen, which I don't know if it will be successful, to reestablish this hive and calm things down. So I have no choice, I feel like, in this area, in this neighborhood, in my situation. I can't even come out of the garage, which is down the hill and away out of line of sight of this hive. I can't even get out of the garage within a minute and I'm already probed and attacked. So this is, as you can see, this is insane. Also, just to let you know, I did get the queen out of here yesterday thinking I would requeen this, but the process was such an unbelievable goat rodeo that I said, nope, this isn't gonna work. So the queen is not in here, uh, has not been in here for 24 hours, but it was just this bad yesterday. To be continued tomorrow. Okay, Friday night now, some developments here. I've been still having significant problems with bees attacking us as soon as we leave the garage. Delivery people, neighbors coming to the front door on the other side of the house. So I've unfortunately decided that I'm gonna have to euthanize these hives. I just, I can't, can't take the chance with all the neighbors so close and it's just this unknown. So, it's like 10 30 at night here and what i'm gonna do is i got some dry ice a bunch of it here and some extra boxes and i'm gonna take off the roof and the inner cover and put a box on top and then fill that box with the dry ice and then put the inner cover and the roof back on and then i'm going to put an extra ipm tray here in the bottom to plug up as much of the air as I can and put a wooden block across the front of the entrance reducer. I do have some isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle and I'm gonna uh, spritz that around the front of the hive where the bees are collecting on the landing board. So hopefully at this point, 99% of the bees are inside the hive and we'll see what happens. Okay, now I'm gonna slip an IPM tray, an extra one underneath the existing one. I 
I've got two here already. Okay, so we're good. See, I've got a bunch of bees that have come up on the glass. I'm gonna spray those with the alcohol now. Now we got the dry ice in this box and dry ice in that box. I'm gonna call it a night and hope this takes care of most of them. Obviously this is a personal decision that each of us as beekeepers have to go through and I hope you never have to go through it, but here I am after five years of beekeeping and I never thought it would come to this, but here we are. So yeah, update to be continued. Take care. Here we are Sunday morning, now July 20th, much less bee activity outside. I'm gonna start breaking this down now. Hopefully the bees inside are all dead or mostly dead. No, there's still some bees in there that are alive. <laughs> Dry ice, not the play, because it's not a complete effective kill. Here's dead bees, but as you can see, there's still a lot in here. I should have probably come in yesterday when they were knocked out and flushed them out. But what this means now is I'm going to do the soapy water pour. So I'm going to check the other hive just to be sure. Oh yeah, they're angry. Okay, so soapy water it is. Dry ice either didn't work or I waited too long. So it can be. Soapy water and pour it into the hives. That was really effective at killing the bees, as you can see. And now what I'm just gonna do is I guess just run the hose through the frames to rinse this all off, flush out the bees. And then I'll move on to the other hive. All right, down to the last two boxes. I got them all propped up here, rinsed out. More soapy water. Tons of dead bees on the deck. Plugging away. That's everything broken down. Boxes are there draining. These two boxes I will rinse now. I've put the hive roofs there to drain. Here's the other equipment also propped up to drain. And you can still see bees around the window. You can hear bees around me and the phone. And I'm gonna come back on with a foam sprayer that I use to wash the car. And I'm gonna try to knock down as many of these flying bees as I can and then start the cleanup process. Okay, it is done. Kind of sad, and man, this heat is killing me. So, hosed everything down, hosed and shook off the frames in those boxes, which I'm most likely gonna have to scrape off the comb if I even wanna save them. Cause you can't have that soap stay in the comb like that. It's very hard to rinse out, but you can probably hear there's still a little bit of flying lost bees here. Hopefully in a day or two, they'll dissipate. But very individual decision here. And I just want to show you how 
quickly things can escalate and get out of hand. And the last thing you want to do is have thousands of drone bees spreading those genes out to who knows how many hives in the radius of your house or your property. So anyway, I hope this was helpful in terms of showing you what not to do as well as what to do in the end. And once again, thanks very much for watching.